Good, y'all. It's your boy, Bad C, a.k.a. Nicholas Cage, a.k.a. Larry J. Blige, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. your mother's baby father. We in the building, man. <laughs> this, is, this is yet it's yet another episode of uh, your favorite song. Basically, we get with some dope, dope artists. We sit down with them. I tell them what my favorite joint that they was associated with as a fan, and then they tell me what they favorite joint they was associated mm. with. We're going to expand. We're going to do MCs. We're doing producers. I'm, I'm going I'm to do battle rappers and find out what their favorite battles are and, and all of that. Because, you know, from the perspective, we know what y'all like. But, no, we know what we like as a fan. But we don't know what, what they want, what they like as a fan. So um, <clears throat> my guest tonight is um, a very talented artist that I've known Peace. for a long, long time. It's pen is impeccable. It's crazy. Appreciate it. Appreciate you know it. You know what I'm saying? And it's always been crazy. And this dude, first of all, I'm going to announce him. His name is Amir. <laughs> Shout to Amir. What's good, brother? That's love. What's up, C? How you, brother? Chilling, man. Now, now, hold, hold on. Let me, let me, let me tell you something. This is my truth. Okay. <laughs> now, 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 I don't know if you, you are MC's MC. So you probably know what I'm talking about when I say it, right? Like mm -hmm. back in the days, it was it, it was, of course, niggas' pens had to be sharp, but there was like an energy when you get around certain niggas. Certain niggas didn't even have to open their mouth; they had an energy like nigga, I rapping up nice before they even <laughs> say anything. Yo, Amir had that. Like like that's hey, love, yo, man. That's love. When bro. I first met him, when I first seen him, or or whatever. He ain't even had to say he rap. Like I know that the nigga nice already. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Brother, so, likewise. And then, man. then when I heard him, I was like, this guy, man, this guy. Like, like, wait, hold on, let me. Yeah, and, 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 and that's and that's deep. That's deep, man. Coming from you, bro. Because I remember when I saw you, I think it was a double XL spread you was in. Mm -hmm. um, that's my first time, and I hadn't even met you yet. And um, yeah, yeah. The name, the name stuck with me. I saw the name Bad Seed. I don't know why I thought you was affiliated with. Dre, right? I thought for some reason, but I did not remember. It was a kitty. Yeah, his name was Seed, but and then I was like, nah, it's not the same guy. But then I heard the voice. It was always your voice, your delivery, yeah, your confidence, yeah. and um, Appreciate and you know how we maneuver, man, through this thing, man. And then we had yeah a, a mutual friend, man. You know, by you know by way of family for you, but you know, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. so. And when, and, when, and when he made the introduction, he was always saying, yo, see, this nice nigga. And I'm like, yo, he said, yo, I'm telling you, he said, I'm telling you this nigga nice. But he was always scared yo. to talk to you. It was like this, he had a, he had a, he had like a, he wasn't scared, but he was kind of scared. I'm not going to say nothing to this guy, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, of the situation, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah, with that being said, I kind of, I kind of kept it down. Like, I ain't going to force my man to try to make the double. But eventually um, everything, you know, panned out, bro. So I always had, um, a, the, the, a mutual respect for you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, and sincerely, sure, bro, because sure. um, and I think a lot of us don't do that as artists a lot. You know, yeah. we we wait till niggas is gone and be like, "Yo, the nigga had that." Come on, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Well, you, you know what it is. It ain't cool to be a fan, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, but when, when did everybody it not do cool, what you though? do? Yeah, but that's, that's what I'm that, saying. That's the whack part. It it, it, it was but, it, that, but 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 you know what? That's United States, bro. Everybody does what you do. If they don't do it, then they know somebody who does. Or yeah. remember, hold on, remember back in the days, you meet a shorty, um, and, and the shorty would be like, "Oh, you rhyme, put my name in a rhyme." Now you meet it's a what, shorty. First like, thing she says, she, she be like, "Let me guess, you rhyme." Let me guess. <laughs> you let know what I'm saying? Your, your mixtape coming out, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. your mixtape coming out. Hey, let me let uh, me guess. You know what I'm saying? Follow your SoundCloud. I, I get it. Yeah, you mm. know what I'm saying? And that and that's how it. That's how it is, and it's just not really special no more. No, everybody feels like they could do I would what agree. you do. They take it's, it's, the, the, ma the magic has definitely been snatched away by uh, uh, by other other forces, man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I just and 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 that conversation is a whole within itself. That's a whole subdivision of another subdivision of a conversation, man. I think for me. Um, but a lot of it comes down to how we've been conditioned to value each other. So certain entities can stay 
in control of what we do with each other. Because we don't only coach, I said it before, and I'm going to keep repeating this, we don't only culture that go to other cultures to ask permission to do our culture. And that's scary. Like, I don't see no disrespect. I don't see um, Jewish rock bands coming to a black label asking us how they should present themselves. I don't see uh, Asian groups coming to us as a label asking us how they should do their thing. Are we cutting them checks and controlling what they do? Right. right? It's, it's still, a, 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 to me, um, a method of uh, indentured servitude. Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah. you know, we play we play with it. We play with it and we jump in and we maneuver and you learn, you you know, you get burnt a couple of times and niggas, everybody says, nah, I'm not getting burnt. Nah, nigga, you're going to get put in a blender. It's inevitable. You've been signed, I've been right. signed. We know what it is and we know how this go. And it's not saying it's going to happen for everybody, right? Some dudes come in with the right yeah. equipment and, you know, right. that's not their story. Right. And I'm not, I don't want to, you know, uh, do that to someone. But my first situation I didn't get put in a blender, but they still owe me some bread. You know what I'm saying? And um, so, so, so I'm glad you brought that up, okay? Because, because uh, for the people, for the people who don't know who Amir is, I need for you to briefly just let them know who <clears> you are. <throat> who, who is Amir? Like, well, what's some of the things that that that's that you got on your belt? Um, well, prior to the the, the situation, we're currently currently. Um, I'm signed to True Soul. I did a three album deal with uh, Pete Rock and, and I'm the um, flagship artist for True Soul, which is a different type of pressure. It's also a different, you know, it's a lot of things that it pros and cons that come with it, but more or less in the beginning, I felt an extreme amount of pressure due to being from Mount Vernon um, in 914 period, bro. And being the only artist he ever signed as a solo artist under these conditions, people may or may not see what he's what he's heard already. You understand? Like, right, uh, right, right. Son, I don't know. Some might be. I don't really know. You know, you may get hit with that until you pull out the Nicholas Cage joints and you're pointing them at him like, "Yo, it's right. the Golden Guns right. is out now. Now you want right, the right, gun, right. right?" So, and um, and I say that from a metaphoric sense, but you know, some people may try. Yeah, but. <laughs> so that part yeah so and then prior to that man i, I, I had been dealing with you know uh a, mo a, a, a plethora of i would say you know producers that have done historical work whether it was arsonist i you know um shot bugs uh damn um 88 keys for, i recently did some more stuff with him uh shout out to him yeah key eight eight is a good guy um you know, um, I don't want to forget anybody, man. Then producers that may not have sold tons of records from around the way that I just love working with, man. Um, yeah. And I had the honor of working with, man. So, um, and before that, I did a deal with Tommy Boy. And when I did a deal with Tommy Boy, it was one of it was one of the first deals that they did that was rendering a lot of the digital rights towards the artists. It was a 70-30 split in my favor. Mm. It was un it was unheard of. At that point, Silverman I, was there. Was Silverman there with you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Rosie, Rosie, Rosie pulled me to the side. Her exact words: "I know you're not stupid. You're playing dumb." I said, "Cause I got signed without a manager. I mean, that's unheard of." <clears throat> so when she signed me, she pulled me to the side. She said, "Go get you a manager, and don't get a manager that you can outsmart. I need you to be with somebody who's seasoned." And I started chuckling. She said, don't play stupid because I know you're not dumb. It's no way you got this much shit done on your own and you stupid. I said, no, nah, not at all. And um, the Tommy Boy deal, I learned a lot about, I understood the business, but what I didn't understand is the social and personal side of how people act with you. They think that you have like, you're going to pull up in a, in a Bentley with a bow tie on it when you walk downstairs, or you may have to go back to a regular job. You may have to do things in order and for certain things to elevate. You know, you think that in my head, I believe that, yo, you signed a deal, they give you this huge advance. You move to Jersey. Yeah, that's it. Rap a <laughs> row. You want to rap a row. <laughs> you, you move to Jersey, get a Whoa. chain. You know, you date a few energy tricks, chicks and you keep it moving. Like, and, it, and so begins your story. 
Um, get a couple throwbacks. That was yeah. over that time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, uh, go to go to Soho, get some exclusive shit. Supreme yeah, Kip, yeah, if, you, if that's your vibe, whatever. And, Man. you know, you start moving around. But what I learned was how people change and tell you that it's you. You know, the expectations of people around you or when, when things, and, and also what's important here is when it's not popping, when they see a decline in activity, you got to pay it. This is where the biggest learning curve is at, is when you're not Talk as hot anymore. Right? Talk to when, them. Yeah. That's where that's where you get your masters and doctorates at and 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 niggerology. That's a fact. Because now you can see what's what. If you if you stay if you're not upset and mad at the world, you can see what's what. Because it's so more this, downs than ups. It's definitely more downs than man, ups. Well, so you get more opportunity to, to learn to see to mm-hmm. see the snakes moving. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, right. So and uh I mean shit, bro, you had a record with J Lo. It popped off. And I, I, I've i heard back in, I'm going to call it industry psyop stories about how it transpired. That's not my business. But oh, you're talking about, you talk about the Usher record. The Usher record. It was, it was, right? it was Usher, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. the Usher record. Right? So, however it happened, it didn't matter. My man was making it work. <laughs> so, yeah, that was going to be my record for you. But let's, 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 let's not talk <laughs> about it. But, yo. Niggas tell me they keep hearing they, they I keep getting calls that they hear the shit in, in little like pubs and shit. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I'll be laughing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you got one in there. But know what? To be honest, that business model that you chose to operate on is normality today. They should salute you. Cause how many niggas is well, you did it the right, wrong way, but it was the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Niggas today, it's yo. Yeah. yeah. At least you was in the same machine, so it worked. L- l- listen, everybody, I put the us, uh, I bootlegged the fucking record. <laughs> I put it out, okay? Yo, yo, man, listen. I figured I shit them niggas was rich already. Them niggas got their money. Like, fuck you, mean you not putting it out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck you, nah, mean nigga. This is, I'm you gonna let this fly. Gave me a copy. You should have never did that. I'm for the hood, nigga. <laughs> Are you stupid, nigga? We get that out here. Boy. This is out here. Radio pulling bum, out bum. Bum. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, nigga, you was it was on fire. And 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 did and and for you. And not only was that one of my favorite records for me because it was popular, it was a favorite moment because I knew it made it possible for me. Like, yo, this nigga pulled yeah. the trigger. It was like one of those, yo. I was at yeah. fucking. I was in Albany with the nigga when we was yeah. up there. I was. I'm not from there, but I was. We was, we was at the, some shit yeah. eating on yeah. Wolf Road or whatever the fuck it was. Some shit. Like, yeah. yeah, it was chilies or fucking whatever. Yeah, it yeah, yeah, been yeah. Olive Garden. I don't know what the fuck it was, right? But I just remember. I'm like, damn, this nigga was in at the table. Yeah. That nigga came back to the crib and said, "He two guns up out." It almost made me like I can't even hit this nigga. It was one of them moments for me. So let's really yeah. talk about the psychological shit. On the back end, this is, this is that part right here that we talk about, the learning portion. Yeah. You know the yeah. artist. I can't even reach out to this nigga now. He gone. Look, the nigga gone. Damn. Yeah. So you almost feel an indictment on oneself because it's not you. But what, like psychologically, what is that? T- as black men, why the fuck do we act like that? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm applauding you. But at the same point in time, I'm indicting myself. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. we normalized it. Cause, cause we've been we've been trained, even hip hop, yo. I think mm-hmm. I think we've been trained to 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 compete with. How can I say this? Other cultures, they don't really compete. They work together. Like like the Asian community, they're not really competing against each other. It's not. It's not. Oh well, I'm trying to do this. The the Jews, they don't. Nobody does that but us. And not only just the black culture, the hip hop culture, which mm-hmm. is pretty much the same thing. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? So it's like niggas don't give up plugs. Niggas like I make Oof. it. I make I make it a point that anything I have, if I fuck with you, even if I don't fuck with you, if you come to me. And you be like, yo, 
I need such and such, or you think you could hook me up or do this or that. I'm going to do it. And the reason why is because that helps push the culture forward. Me keeping the shit for myself is not going to push the culture forward. Now, there are some things you cannot appropriate, like, but, but there's certain things that, yo, man, like, shit, what? You want DJ Premier email to send, send shit in and submit shit to? Maybe you don't have it. All right, cool. Boom. You could have that. I've done that for artists. You understand yes. what I'm saying? And, oh, and yes, yes, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, I, mm, yeah. It's, it's supposed to be that way. You you know because it pushes the culture forward. Facts. And, and other cultures, they do that for each other. They they yeah. network. It's not. It's and, and it's normalized. That. It's a normalized behavior. It's yes. it's cult. It's cultivated. It's normalized. And if you don't do that. They shun you. They put you. You not. Oh, you can't mess with us because we. This is a progressive movement. Facts. Yeah, it's crazy. What? 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 Yo, between Mount Vernon and New Rochelle, fuck it, DC, VA, New York, Albany, whatever places I've been. I've invited. I can't even put on my hand how many niggas I done brought to industry parties. And I'm not even popping, popping like that at the time. But you know, you know how it is. You got plus niggas invite you. Right. I'm right, talking, right. I put one time I bought 13 niggas. Told them, say, nah, they, I mean, who they were? I'm with these niggas. You know I me, mean? y'all niggas going first. I know the director. I'm going to get in. I let make sure everybody got in. One time, that was one time. I'm talking about niggas renting cars, going to these parties in the summer, sitting all these cribs and you moving around. But when it was this, when I was in the low part of the valley, it was nobody yeah. invite niggas didn't turn around and said, yo, hey, you want to go with me? Nah. And that was where, for me, the greatest lessons took place for self. And, and I, still, I still would help niggas because that's just not who I am. But if I could help you without hurting myself, then right. I'll do it. That's a policy I make with myself. If I right. can help you without hurting that hurting my relationship with this person, then I'll do it. But if I know that that shit may ruin the fiber of my relationship, then you can't, don't ask me to do that. And I'll tell you, I'm right, like, look, right. bro, I just, I just met this nigga. I don't really know him like that. I can give you right. the shit, but understand right. the position you put me in. <clears throat> right, it's, it's man shit. Yeah, it's basically, yeah. it's basically mm -hmm. man shit. And these are these are the the fibers that the, those before Russ had. And yeah. it's, it's the same thing. Even the gangster shit like that. Gangster shit is like that too. Like the, the mob ran like that. You know what I'm saying? In yeah. terms of looking out for each other and doing whatever. So I think that that's the problem. We've been programmed to to be separate. And to, yeah. You, you, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. it, 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 it and, and, and ima imagine that though. Imagine artists. Imagine Snoop Dogg or, or for instance, hypothetically, MC Hammer having a management company for artists. Hypothetically, the amount of wisdom, niggas ain't gonna get burnt like that. Yes, in fact. But we don't we don't set up the place a lot. And I'm not saying, I don't know who may have it, but it hasn't been a normalized behavior in, in the ecosystem of hip hop that when we, tr when we transition to a new position, that we don't get involved in the business because we're like, nah, I ain't mess with that music. You call it music shit. I ain't mess with that music shit no more. When they fed you, your family took care of you niggas just traveling, having fun. You made it some of the your, greatest. It fed your soul. It word, fed your and soul. It, word. And you traveled the world with it. I remember looking yeah. up, nigga, you was on, uh, uh, was it Letterman or Leno? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. You had the Evizu jeans on, nigga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The shit, yeah. you know what I mean? You yeah, kind of bold yeah. shoes up there. I'm like, oh, this. And once yeah. again, I'm having a moment. I'm like, yeah, yeah. This nigga, these, him and his band, they out of here, nigga. This record is cool. Yeah. You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? I was just having that conversation about that. Shout the Mims. I was I was talking about that, that experience earlier. Um, I've been a part of, like, the small tours you know, shit all over the place. But I was fortunate to be a part of that. Dude had the number one record on the planet. Like, it was crazy. Like the, the <laughs> It shit. was crazy. I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. It, it was crazy. Like, the shit, the shit that uh, 
I saw and and the hotels we were in and the groupies and uh, it was it was insane. It, you know it, it, it'll it'll mess your soul up, bro. It it will scar you because you come back you come back without your Superman cape and you come back to the hood. You like it'll send and you. You gotta go back you. to work. <laughs> it'll send you. It Yo, just bro, part of it. You in this part you of the valley. Work, crazy. You said that work looking out the window like, and it was dope because it was in Albany when when I when Mims gave me the call when he called me and was like, "Yo, come come through," and um I was lucky because I was working. Or um, over on Washington Ave Extension, shout shout to them. It was a little customer service spot. I got the call when I was dead. Mims was like, "Yo, quit your job." I was like, "What you talking about?" He was like, "Quit your job." Quit the job he, was, he was like, "Yo, son." He was like, "Yo, son, I need you to come on the road with me." I was like, "I right, I got you." So I told my job, my dad. You know, they was wild excited. Them niggas let me come back after. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of the man at work. But it still was whack because I'm at work. Like, I don't want to <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was so crazy. <laughs> said, it was still whack because I had to go to work. But listen to that. Yo, bro, I've been struggling. I'm, 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 I I got to I gotta have a crack, a crack open book moment. <sighs> I've been doing technology for about five years. Roughly, niggas don't know. I, I hold I hold a full fledged master's degree in cybersecurity. I got an undergrad in computer science from Fordham U. We're talking. I I I've held and I still hold. Like you're talking about executive suite jobs, global positions on certain teams, and these are deep technology. This ain't the IT shit where I'm fixing your little router. Not. Nah, I'm talking about shit where you have to have a a certified skill set and. Right. Imagine doing that and a nigga like Pete say, yo, I want you to come to true soul, son. <laughs> so, only difference is I, 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 didn't, I didn't go rogue yet. I, I wanted to go rogue. Like, yo, I wanted to go do the Dave Chappelle shit. I wanted to do the oh. Dave Chappelle shit. Fuck yeah. you. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. You cool. You cool. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. I'm out. Take over the trash yeah. can. I was, I was on that type of talk. But it's a very, see, we haven't normalized that yet because you can't, I feel like I'm in a zone, bro. I, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm really headed in a place where art, I know that there's going to be a vanguard of artists that have the background or the pieces to communicate what art and technology have been and what it will become. And they can speak to the deep end and they can speak to people on the other side about how this shit really works. I'm seeing a lot of fraudulent fake crypto tech niggas that went to YouTube University. It's no disrespect, but they're not, nobody's checking their qualifications or the pedigree of what they're saying. Mm. And when I see that, it takes me back to humble pie. I'm like, I mean, do you waste your time arguing with these niggas trying to, yo, you wrong? Or do you just shut the fuck up and be like, no what? Your time, your time is nearing. The train is in the station. Your bags are on the train. Facts. You got your ticket. You got your seat. Right. Just chill out. Yeah. Because you're gonna you're gonna get an opportunity to do so. And I even I appreciate, I treat every interview, every converse, I don't even call them interviews, conversations, man, with, with with fellow musicians, fellow artists, and fellow men of color, man, because we we need that fellowship. We gotta talk about that real shit. And 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 a lot of artists don't ever talk about, yo, I was selling dope. Everybody ain't selling dope, nigga. Come on, man. I did my little bullshit, but for how long was I thought I was going to be out there when yeah. everybody I know is going to the feds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, nigga, see, I'm going to class. But see, that's the thing. <laughs> everybody at least touched it at some point, Paul. Yeah, yeah. But everybody fronting like they was Tony Montana with it. That's the These problem. These niggas had like half an ounce of weed. They might have made five hundred dollars, and now they got trap stories Yo, for, niggas, the, for the next five years. Niggas, I mean, come on. Niggas still owe the connect about sixty dollars. <laughs> niggas still owe the. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, it's Fuck like it's here, like man. it's like on Michael Epps. He said his cousin was selling Knicks. 
the nigga had the shit on a nickel bag hanging from a string off the porch. He said, yo, kicking it on the floor. He said, nigga, <laughs> this is a five dollar bag of weed. You out here with a briefcase and a five dollar bag of weed. You don't get the fuck. Come on, bro. Go somewhere with that. Come on. So, man. so, so, so look, so I want to first of all let everybody know if they don't know. Amir was on my album on yes, the record. Sir. Thank you, man. I appreciate Saul, it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. uh, no doubt, no doubt. It was my pleasure, man. My pleasure. Oh, uh, Guilty Simpson was also on the record, right? Yeah, now, I, I know he, he's a savage. He's a savage. He's a savage. Very beastie, right? Yeah. Now, I, I can I could go on record, and I'm proud to say that on my album Alpha, I feel like everybody, every feature on there, strong body, feature, mm-hmm. and I love it. I love That's it. Deep. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. I'm fans of of everyone that that that's all my shit. You know what I'm saying? Thank um, you, man. It, it it really meant a lot to me that everybody fucked with it when y'all did. You know. Now to you, you ain't had to do me like that though, bro. Nah, no, no, no. Like it that. was it. It was it was bugged out because I I knew. I know how you be popping shit in the barbershop when niggas is whack. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be nobody's barbershop conversation. Niggas not gonna put me, stuff me yeah. and put me on the wall in the mannequin yeah. wall in the barbershop. But that would never, bro, come you know on. What I'm I, I, I know you, I know, I know I was, what I the didn't, pistol. Listen, I was, I really, yo, when I wrote it, I was really on some shit like, this nigga C, super critical nigga. Yo, hey, yo, know what? <laughs> Just yeah. make sure each, each make sure each one of these fucking bars is pungent. Yeah. That they Wait, stick. hold on. What, what was the what was the, the paralyze you with seven sevens? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, like the plus side between sevens to hit you with one fours, like the plus side Whoa, between yeah. sevens. Woo, woo, woo. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, hit yeah, you yeah. with one four, like the plus, the plus side sum. between seven sevens. Crazy, it's sanity. You know what I'm saying? I I, I gotta I gotta give it to you. So on that Thank note, mm-hmm. I want to ask you. You know, this is this is what what the, the the whole point of the show. Out of all the songs that you've made, now released or unreleased? Really, it could be it could be unreleased. It could be something on the hard drive right now. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But what is your favorite song? And and then we're gonna get into you know, specifics about that particular I'm a, song. I'm a segue to this record because nobody's heard it yet. And I'm going to say it. I'm not saying it. And this is not a shameless plug. The album that I did, the Dope Boy Soul album that we have coming mm-hmm. with Pete, it's a record on there. Um, and it's called um, What It Mean To You. I see it in your eye. I see it. I see it. The reason... To date, to date, and today, I would I would pick that record out of everything that I've done, was because the way that record came about for the project was Pete gave it to me for a mixtape. It was gonna be on Twenty One Grams. I sent the nigga the record back. He said, "Zach was nah, buddy. You gotta take that with you, buddy." <laughs> he heard the record. He said, "No, no, no, no. That ain't no mixtape record." We t- he said, "Nah, that's not no. Nah, you that's not a mixtape record now." We taking that with us, buddy. And when I he said it, I kept listening to this. And what the fuck is it? But when I he gave it back to me, when he did what when he did to it, it went from that to this. Like it, like and because I didn't understand his production methodology. He hears you. He gives you a skeleton, right? You 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 do what you do. Then he you give it back. By the time he goes to Jamie's crib and he tells you to come over to let's do the record, this shit then turn. Into it, it's not like a remix, but it's a, it's not, it's what you had, but it's like amplified now. Like he's yeah. doing, he going into he produce the record. Produce yeah. the record. And it's a joint on there called What It Mean To You. And the reason why I love that record, bro, is because um, the way it's the product, that the way it and it sway of the joint when it come on. I remember it was on um, what's his name? I was at uh, Electric Garden in Brooklyn. 
And I played a couple of the records, you know, from the project, whatever. And when it came on, I remember DJ Clips might have been in there. Like him and some other people, like the band was in there, Davo, you know. And these guys got Grammys. And, I, and, and their accolades are important for one reason, because they that's a, it's an indicator that they know what certain shit sound and feel like when it hit right. Mm-hmm. And niggas looked at me and said, no, that's one of them. He, they didn't even say that's the one. They said, Don, but that's one of them. I said, yeah, I felt that. So I knew I wasn't bugging out. So um, to date, that record feels the best to me for production, for pocket, how the shit was syncopated, how the texture of my voice in alignment with the production and the way he carved out a, a lane through, you know, becoming another element instrument with the instruments he used already. And, 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 it's, and then how Jamie, Jamie Stobbs, Stobe Stobb, right? Stop. And for engineers that know what he's done in hip hop, like, you got Pete and Jamie. And this, and so sonically, you shouldn't be in, at a deficit if you do your part. Now, it was 29 records cut, we picked 13. And I didn't have to fight for that record. It was an automatic. Okay, we started the album. We got 12 more. He, he I knew he knew that this one we even though I've it was other joints in the in the in the bag in the bag, we knew that that one was on the project before no matter what else was picked. So I was like, so I, right, I would just right. love I'm 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 anxious and um to how it's gonna be when a, when it's calling performance for that record, when I'm able to perform it. And it's out. And you're gonna probably, I pray that we, you know, we could we could grace it together. You'd be like, nigga, you told me that was one of them things. I'm like, bro, I told you it's what because if any, if you had a I had a, anybody that you would have been like, nah, this and the tactic when it's supposed to come out. We're looking on 2022, man. Clearly. Um, I don't wanna, I can't say January, January or February yet, but I know that we just wrapping up the distribution portion of it, you know, and uh the little fine details. Um, so, and kind of how, you know, the business attack of who is a man type of shit, you know, the, the introduction. Cause even though we've been around the block, we still, you know, we still, you're still the new guy. Introduction, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. As, as yeah. far as, as far as he's concerned and, and being a part of being connected to a, um, a legacy artist slash producer, um, you know, cause it, Pete and Dre, it, those are two producers, in my opinion. You sign to them, you if you don't, you know, you you gotta yeah. shit gotta be. It's a fact. For instance, fact. Dre had a Dre had a kid that I don't know if he ever came out. Name was, was Stat Quo. I thought that this yeah. nigga Ooh, fire, fire. <laughs> Yo, remember remember this shit? Uh, well, what's what's the the freestyle shit with Dre was talking on it? And then, was, and then, that nigga went crazy. And that's that, the beat, do 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 do. Dude, dude, dude. It's crazy shit. That nigga yeah, just me, blacked out. Me, don't let me tell you something. Don't make me pull this shit up. This nigga Stat Quo was definitely. He's a, he was. Oh, Stat Quo freestyle with Dr. J. Yeah, nigga. When I heard the nigga, and then I never heard the album. Yeah, man. It was a few guys that went over there in that camp. It went under that that you know that aftermath umbrella. They didn't have the patience. And yeah, then Kendrick, yeah. and I know even Joel O.T. said what they did for Kendrick, they was supposed to do for him, but he didn't have the patience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens because Dre, Dre Aquarius, man. You know what I'm saying? He's going to make sure that shit resides. Yeah, up. but I, I would say right now, that record is, is what it means to you for me right now, yeah. As soon as I hear it, when it drops, I'm going to hit you up. That's my word of God, because I'm, I'm going to be looking for that one. And I trust me, I, I ain't gonna fast forward straight to it. I'm gonna I'm, I'm bump the album <laughs> for the top. I gotta get the experience. You know what I'm saying? I don't but, think I don't think what, I don't I didn't show I didn't show a change anybody on it. Pete definitely didn't. Do I, it. I I no doubt, no doubt. I'm just, I can't. I'll, I'll say that. I'll say this, I'll say this to you about the album about Dope Boy Soul. It's not it's nothing as nearly Dope Boy Soul on 21 grams is apples and oranges. Dope Boy yeah. Soul is really is produced a lot more. It's intricate, it's these are the beats that he would have gave to Jay, Nas, Kanye, anybody else. He yeah. would have the beats that I got were able to to go in the yeah. bag. Said, "Yo, can I? Not even can I get that?" It was kind of like, "Yo, here." Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm like, it's it. So it take a minute to let your hype shit settle down. And I right, cool. This nigga yeah. got mad. Let it's mad shit in here. Yeah, that's dope. And so I had to try to, you know, then he would give me shit that he felt matched the, my, my my tone. And we took it from there. So I ain't gonna yeah. front. One of, my, one of my favorite MCs, one of my favorite producers, linking up, getting that done. Before we get up out of here, do you have a ill or a funny Pete Rock story and experience? <clears throat> oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but this is one of those Mr. Miyagi moments. Like Pete Yagi. He, Pete Mr. Yagi. <laughs> Yo, he, I know, I know, I know when he's doing this shit to me, but he don't. He, so the lessons have been a little bit more spread apart because I've become a better student. So he right. don't really drill down on me as much. In the beginning, we was doing an album. I, you know, before we went in to do the album, the mixtape was done. He said, yo, meet me in Brooklyn. And Pete always does this shit with me. Like, he's always like, if you want to. Come on, you know I'm pulling up, nigga. This is, I'm here to rap, nigga. This, this. Yeah, yeah, fact. So I get, to the, I, get to, I get to the venue, the spot, and Marcus Machado, who's, you know, it, with, that's in the Soul Brothers, I see this mic on the stage with the, like, a, I swear to God, with a blue light on it, just, the mic is just sitting there. And it's, so I walk in the spot, the whole shit damn near empty. I yeah. see Marcus and the assistant and a few other people. I went up to the nigga. I said, yo, what's going on? I said, Pete told me to meet him here. What's up? He said, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, you performing. I said, I said, what, nigga? He said, he said, oh, you ain't know? He, yo, he was so calm. Said, oh, you ain't know? He didn't tell you? I said, I said, nah, nah. We, we, we rehearsing, though, right? He said, nah, you're performing and they're recording it. Yeah, nah, nigga. I said, no, no, no. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said, nah, you serious or you playing? He started chuckling. <laughs> you better get ready, nigga. Oh, nigga. So I put the earbuds in and I'm on a motherfucking phone trying to memorize three joints that I could just learn that I'm, I was familiar with more than the others. And I'm trying to just cram. Wow. Wow. Pete walk in and with the, his DJ shit his hand with the shades. You know, he got the aviated yeah. Gucci shits, you know, with the, yo, what up? Yo, all right, all right. Hit you with the look. He looked at me like he was going to do the James Brown shit to me, right? So he, so he sets up on the stage. I looked at the nigga Marcus. I'm like, dog, oh, I can't tell my nigga I ain't ready. Right. You signed a P-Rock, nigga? You ain't ready? That's a fact. You can't play fuck. with that. <laughs> so oh. I said, fuck it. I'm here to ball, nigga. Let's go. I went up there. That nigga started playing records from the mixtape instrumentals. Oh, okay. I, I went in. Fumbled. Uh, fumbled again. Uh, do it over. Do it over. Yo, eh, you ready? I mean, dude, what you, you nervous, nigga? Yeah, he was on this type of time with me. Any, I think any other hot-headed nigga would have walked out. Facts. I couldn't walk out, and I would never walk out on him. It's because when I looked at his face, it wasn't a look of trying to break you. It's like, nigga, this is, nigga, I'm, I'm here for perfection. You don't know your shit? So what if I call you tomorrow, we got an opportunity, and you ain't ready? Mm. I call arsonist. I call Joel O.T. I'm like, yo, man, guess what happened, man? It's like, nigga, I don't feel sorry for you. Fuck you mean? You ain't know your raps. If you was ready, you ain't got to get ready. I'm trying to, I tried to go find someone to agree with. Yo, you didn't give me a day to prep. Nah, nigga. I was up there for four hours and 37 minutes for three songs. That nigga said, go take a break. Niggas got this shit documented. I'm, this shit going to hit the internet, so I know it is one day. That nigga was roasting me. But it was like over and over and over and over again, same songs. He said, nigga, you're going to stay up here till you get it. Shout to Pete Rock. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said, nigga, he took his shades off. He, you know, when a nigga do this to you, he had to say, he did this to me, nigga. He's on, you're going to stay up here till you, nigga, you're going to stay up here till you get it, nigga. It was that, Yo. it was that, it 
it was that vibe in the room. So I'm up here, I'm, oh. I'm, sweat, I'm sweating profusely at this moment. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. fuck. He pulled me to the side and said, hey, nigga, you know how many niggas in the world want to be you? That would, don't, don't let people throw you off, my nigga. Just, nigga, you here. I, I, I know you got it. Just relax. Yeah. He said, now get up here. These young raps, you wrote this. I'm not, that nigga knew the words and I didn't even know the shit. Yeah. It was spooky. He ad libbing the shit. He said, oh, my ad lib's throwing you off. He did all of the, <laughs> it was all of that shit up there. Nigga, I was overwhelmed <laughs> by hour and a half in. I was struggling to get through the records because they're recording this. So I had to do it seamless per record. It wasn't no, yo, cut. No, nah, nigga, you're going to do this shit until we get a good cut. It was a record off the mixtape. It's okay. Um, the one record called A Hutch and another one called Love and Light. I will never forget these three records. And I went, I, bro, I, th I thank my nigga the next day. I had to send him a, well, as a matter of fact, we got outside. He said, bro, you know, I love you, man. I ain't trying to play you. But nigga, I'm here for perfection. You can't get it, nigga. This is, you know, you know what, what stage you on, right? He was on his ditty. He was nigga. about to have you walking for cheesecake. <laughs> so, Damn, man. You so was in had, Brooklyn, so you had to walk for Yeah, I was in Brooklyn. <laughs> and so, you know, my respect for him increased and my love for my brother increased because that yeah, was a, one yeah. of the, it was funny as shit in hindsight, but in the moment, nigga, I felt the you gravity was tight. of life. That was tight, and I felt the gravity of life pulling at me. And, you know, I still stayed, I stayed up there until I got it. And he, yeah. I think he, he had, he gained more respect because I didn't get too flustered. Fold. Even though, yeah, you yeah. ain't fold. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think nah, a mutual respect, yeah. So that shit was bugged out. Yeah, shout to shout to Pete Rock, man. You know, definitely wanted to see if we could get one of those stories. Yo, bro, I appreciate you for stopping through. Likewise, man. Likewise, this I thank is, you for is, having me, is, brother. This was dope. This is one of the dopest ones, man. That thank you, you, man. you know, so far, you know. So, uh, you you need to be doing this too, man. Like this type. Yo, of pe thing people too. say that say that to me, man. I, you know, I, I thought about it. I, I'm still. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna ramp up and do something, man. You know, I yeah. may collab. We may we, maybe we can collab or so. I, I got, I got yeah, an yeah, idea. I got an idea for a joint. You know, I think it'll be funny as shit. And somebody yeah. like me and you, we like, we like, you know, the neighborhood assholes. But we, yeah, we, yeah, fact. We, we on the borderline, of <laughs> the borderline of being disrespectful. But it's like, eh. yeah, respectfully disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's all. You know, that's all. but nah, yeah, I'll I'll take heed to that. I appreciate you coming through. As always, Likewise, brother. brother. Always. I, I wish you nothing but success. Likewise, and man. You, you need anything we hear, baby. Yes, sir. Always. Word up. You already know. Right. Salute.